Hello and welcome to this repair tutorial and today we're going to be looking at a Marantz PM7200 amplifier. Um, this amplifier was launched about 2002 and that was around the same time period that the NAD C370 amp which I would imagine the PM7200 competed directly against. In my own personal opinion and this is not only from a service point of view but also an audio quality point of view I would put the Marantz way above the NAD easily. Um, when you look at the layout of the Marantz and also the quality of the components you don't have a lot of the issues associated with what you see with the NAD where you have these low quality um, capacitors which just literally are mounted directly to the power components and you get a lot of age related issues. With the Marantz the design really is, is just excellent. So when you look at the general specification, sort of interesting uh, one of the features that this amplifier has. So it is a beast, all right? So when you think of domestic audio, when you have the power output and this is operating in AB mode, it can deliver up to 95 watts RMS um, times two into eight times speaker loads. And that, that's, that, is, that is a grunt of an, of an amplifier. And then the other nice thing that it does is from the front, the user can select class A mode. And then as soon as you select class A mode, that's running at 25 watts per channel RMS then in times two, eight ohms. Now, during the test phase for this amplifier, if you connect the headphones directly to it and you have nothing connected to the Fano input, which is the uh, moving magnet input, Normally with most amplifiers you'll have some degree of background noise, you know, it just it just gets picked up. But when this amplifier was selected into class A mode, it is completely silent. It's almost as if you had it, the grounding caps on the rear input RCA sockets. And if you were sitting back, maybe you got some headphones on, and you select that class A mode, just absolutely exceptional in terms of audio reproduction and the complete and utter uh, elimination of any noise floor whatsoever. You, you just can't hear anything. So very, very impressive. And then you can also have dual speaker selection. So um, speaker set uh, A or, or speaker set 1, speaker set 2, terminology for the Marantz. And you can also defeat the tone controls. So that's the direct mode. And frequency response is 20 hertz up to 20 kilohertz. Uh, low total, total harmonic distortion 0 0.03 and then input sensitivity for the moving magnet Fano input stage that's 2.5 millivolts and for all of the other line input stage it's at 150 millivolts and then in terms of dyna dimensions um, 440 by 159 by 275.4 and as I said it is a beast of an amp so the weight overall unboxed comes in at 12.3 kilograms, so a very, very heavy amplifier. And then what was the issue with this? Well, the first thing that you, you could see is that the amplifier was actually in protection mode. And I've seen a number of amps, uh, some 200 amps come through the workshop. And when you remove the top cover plate, you sort of have a look down towards the power input stage. You don't see uh, any of the input protection fuses blown. So it tends to indicate that normally this is associated with dry solder joints. And that's really the only kind of major sort of uh, issue that you see with these Marantz amplifiers of this time period. So it could be any of the series amplifiers made around sort of the early 2000s. So not a difficult repair. You know, it's not that you've got to go in there and start replacing, you know, extremely expensive components. Or maybe you kind of got to rebuild one of the output stages because it's gone short circuit. So the other nice thing about this amp is it's completely modular. So it, it's, it's such a pleasure to work on. So once you've removed the, the back cover plate, literally I can extract the main amplifier module and you can see this in the video. And then I'm free then to work on that on the bench. And then I can focus on the power input circuit, same. Take it out, do all the necessary work. And then I can then look at the tone controls, all of the input um, boards as well. Now, one important thing that I need to highlight to you, and I've said this before in previous tutorials, and this is around this common ground point. So I'm showing you in the video 
where you have the rear speaker terminals and when the screws are removed you'll see that there's no paint covering it's bare metal and that is exactly as they design it so if you are doing any repair work very very important when you come to test phase just ensure that that back panel is connected to the overall chassis of the amplifier and the necessary screws are connected to the main uh, amplifier module let's term it as that and those rear grounding screws are connected you know if you don't do that then you have broken one of the common ground points for a lot of the other circuits and that's not going to bode well for you so you need to ensure and make sure that you that you do that so really what's the repair approach well as i said the issue is associated with dry solder connections so what you have to do and i always say this anyone who's regu regular listener um, you've got to take a systematic approach right so what i do here is i just remove each one of the boards and i do a manual clean so this is just to remove any residual dust and dirt that's quite normal that comes into amplifiers through the vent holes and then I just take out each one of the input boards. And what I'm looking for here are these um, sort of dry joints that you see, almost like um, dull solder joints. And then often you'll see some sort of circular cracks around there. And anywhere you have something which is mechanically stressed, as you plug something in or you connect something, over time these solder joints will start to break down. So that's what you see. You actually see that... I take out each one of the boards and then I look at each one of the solder joints and I just reflow them. So the input boards are the first things then to be done. Um, for the amplifier, for the input selection board, it's not using an electromechanical switch. This is a microprocessor based amplifier um, via the associated circuit is, is operating the input selection relay. So you know, as I said, it's a, it's a fine build of an amplifier and high quality as well then. And then when I move on to the main amplifier board, when you turn it over, you will see lots of dry solder joints. And you're pretty much reflowing most of the board, to be honest. So, again, just sort of make some time for this. You know, even if it sort of takes you two hours, maybe three hours to do all of the work, just set that aside and you know, get yourself a drink and just sort of relax and just work your way through it. And honestly, you will be rewarded with an exceptional amplifier once you've done all of that. Now, the other thing that I, I sort of focus on is to replace the speaker selection relays. You know, when you look at them, you know, they're heavily um, oxidized because of the switching. And on the input um, power input board, you also have a 16 amp switching relay as well. So that was replaced. And then the other two speaker protection relays, which are 24 volts um, double pole changeover relays, and those are replaced. And the reason for that is that these relays become oxidized and you can get intermittent sound loss and also low level distortion as well. So that just eliminates that completely. You don't want to do all of the, the work and then get to test phase and then you've got these common issues associated with raw worn relays or oxidized relays as well then. And then I'm also showing as well um, the access hole. You'll see these on all of most of the amplifiers or Marantz amplifiers of this time period. What I would say is, okay, you can remove the screws for the hatch at the, at the bar underneath, but it really doesn't give you full access to the whole of the board. And you need to have that because some of the dry solder joints, you won't be able to get access from the service hatch. But I'm just showing you that that's what it is. And then you'll probably find there's quite a lot of flux you know, from um, manufacture. So again, what you want to do there is just use some form of flux remover just to go in there you know just spray it onto the board and then and that will just remove all and that heavy layer of flux after of course you've reflowed it and then that leaves that board you know really in, in pristine condition and just really really good you'll also see in the video as well what's nice is that the speaker protection board plugs in and there's just a small location clip at the back you just unscrew it and you can unplug the board and then again there are dry solder joints on the protection board so this amplifier being in protection mode could have been caused by the protection board or it may be associated maybe with some of the other dry joints on the main amp board or, or the uh, power input board and then the video also shows the tone board so once you get access to the tone board I can then look at that and then what I'll do again is I'll reflow it, make sure that there's no dry joints on the headphone socket, which again is very, very common. And then I'm using deoxit then to just clean any of the user controls and switches. So these are the potentiometers and also the manual 
operating switches as well and then I also show the main power input board and I've kind of divided that into three um, should we say photographs on the video because it's quite a, a large board what I would tell you is be very very careful you know those large electrolytic smoothing capacitors hold a huge amount of energy so just be very very careful because you've probably been testing the amplifier so those capacitors are fully charged pretty much and you don't want to get any issue you know associated with it's dead common like to, to accidentally short them out and that's going to cause you know a lot of discharge of energy which could affect um, the the board you know blow tracks off the board or, or something like that and then the other thing that you need to have a look at is the motorized volume control you may also find some dry joints on there and then also clean it with deoxid as well and you can see that in the video and then I'll just show you that and then when you come to the alignment of the amplifier that's kind of interested in, in itself to be honest um, when you get to that stage and I'll show this in the video which is the circuit uh, schematic I'm just using the left channel here and then what it shows it shows the voltage amplifier stage and then also the power amplifier stage so really you have three adjustments that you need to make so leave the amplifier running for a period of time just to warm through and then the first thing that I do here is I just check the DC offset on each one of the channels so that's very easy what you simply do there is you connect your multimeter across the speaker terminals uh, for each channel of course and then you can see the potentiometer here or should we say preset probably the better terminology and then I just adjust that then you know for the lowest possible millivolts that I can get um, normally they'll say you know plus or minus 30 millivolts is fine but on this amplifier you can literally get it down to to almost like oscillate just maybe just about one millivolt or, or, or naught which is terrific and then the next stage is where you will set the um, bias current then for the output stage but remember that this output stage is operating in dual mode so you can select first of all for the alignment you select that it's running in class a b mode okay so you just make sure that the class a mode push button on the front has not been selected and then what you're able to do then is you're just simply measuring and they refer to test points but you're measuring across the emitter resistor with the respective channel and then what you do is you adjust the preset until you read 18 millivolts plus or minus a couple of millivolts then and you'll find that's really really good you know th this amplifier doesn't have any issues with instability and it just comes in nice rock steady at 18 millivolts then and then once that's done what happens then is you select class A mode and you can see here that you need to set again across the same test points or, or meter resistors and you're setting that then to a reading of 90 millivolts and as we understand with class A mode that means that the output stage is fully biased irrespective of the input signal so I'm sort of going to a tutorial about this but really class sort of B mode sort of came about particularly when you had more portable devices because if you had a radio and it was a portable radio operating class A mode it was effectively draining the batteries constantly really at full power uh, with no audio connected you know even if the volume is minimum so that's that's not good but if it's a mains powered device as this is then when you select class A mode you can see that there's significant current and that's flowing through the output stage and you just align that then to uh, to 90 millivolts what you'll also see as well and I'll sort of show this in the video is you'll see that there is a relay and there's a large power relay um, which is on the main circuit board it's actually on the power input board and that relay comes into operation when you select class A mode and you'll hear it just literally click in it's a nice solid clunk as it comes in um, what I've done here is I've just removed it from the board and what you'll find there's quite a lot of oxidization on the switching contacts they don't become pitted you know it's not switching huge amounts of current so they're not pitted or anything like that but I just simply uh, clean that with di deoxid uh, I'm not using any kind of abrasive or you know like a file or anything like that just literally removing any of that oxidization and then I can put the uh, the top cap back on and resolder it back into the board then and as I said to you you know this really is a terrific amplifier so I know you know on a lot of the auction websites they are highly sought after and I can totally understand that but 
you know, the ones that I've seen come through the workshop, and there's been a number of them, I don't see any sort of major issues, as I said earlier, you know, where you have to, you know, spend a huge amount of money to restore them. It's just two or three hours of your time, replacing a number of relays, and just doing all of these solder joints, and then um, doing the final alignment, and just a bit of cleaning them with the deoxid. And once you've done all of that, as I said, uh, I don't think you, you would sell the amplifier. I think you, you're just going to just, just sit back and just listen to that audio quality then. So that really brings us to the end of this tutorial. So again, as I always say, really, really appreciate you stopping by. And uh, a lot of the feedback that I'm getting on the channel has been terrific. Uh, a lot more questions, a lot more engagement from you all, which is great to see. And as I always say, if you have any questions, by all means, just email audio amplifier servicing at AOL.com and I'll regard to the repair and then to give you uh, insight um, as required then. All right. So I thank you and I appreciate it as always and uh, wishing you all the well until the next time. Thank you. Goodbye.